my giant reticulated python is getting an enclosure upgrade. Jinx is now a little over 14 feet long and weighs more than 60 pounds. She's doing well in her current enclosure, but I want to give her a little bit more space. She's also absolutely beautiful, so I want to show her off. So that's why I'm sort of turning my living room into a reticulated python exhibit. I reached out to my friends at customcages.com to help me design and build an enclosure that's beautiful and functional. This will be the biggest enclosure that I have ever owned or put together. The enclosure is going to be large enough that I could actually walk inside of it. So she'll have lots of room to stretch out and climb. I'll also add her favorite hides and some new enrichment obstacles for her to explore. And I'll be honest, I'm not the greatest of builders, so I'm hoping that this thing is pretty easy to put together. According to customcages.com, the first step is to unbox everything, make sure you have all the pieces, and get organized. I don't have any help today, and it's getting late, so I think I'm just going to get everything organized, and then we'll start building tomorrow. Yesterday, I unboxed everything and organized all the parts, and today I started putting it all together. Reticulated pythons are the longest species of snake on Earth. Jinx just turned five years old and she's already over 14 feet long. So I wanted to get an enclosure large enough that she's comfortable in, even if she grows another four or five feet. And this custom cages enclosure I think is going to do the trick. This enclosure is going to be big, so she'll have plenty of room to move around and climb. So far, this enclosure has been pretty easy to put together, and I am not the best builder. I had to get a little help putting in the sliding doors, but aside from that, I was able to put it all together myself. I got half of it built today, and now I'm pretty comfortable with how it all works so I should be able to finish the other half tomorrow. I noticed today that Jinx is in shed, so I'll leave her in her current enclosure until she's done shedding, and that'll give me enough time to get this new enclosure built and established. Today I'm putting together the second half of this enclosure that I got from customcages.com. Having already built one half, the second half of this enclosure was pretty easy to put together, and I think Jinx is really going to like it. She'll have a lot more room to climb and explore, and aesthetically, it'll be a lot nicer to look at. After putting this together, I realized that it's actually two enclosures hooked together. I would have to order a few parts, but in the future, if I needed two large enclosures, these could easily be separated. I've been working on building this a little bit each day. I was able to finish building the cage itself today. The next steps will be setting up heating, lighting, and decorating the enclosure. I'm not in a hurry right now because Jinx is in shed. When snakes are in shed, they usually stay in hiding and they don't like to be bothered. And oftentimes they won't even eat. So I don't even plan on moving her in for a few days, which will give me time to set it up and ensure it's maintaining the proper heat and humidity levels. But it seems strong and secure, so it'll be ready when she is. My giant reticulated python is getting a giant enclosure. Today we removed the protective coverings and we pulled everything out so we could seal the floor. Jinx just shed, so she's ready to move in as soon as we get this thing finished. Life got busy, so we are a little bit behind schedule, but we found some time today to get a few things done. After removing all the protective coverings from the windows, we removed it from the floor as well. We want the floor to be waterproof. She's going to have a very large water dish inside, and if any of that water spills out, we don't want it leaving leaking on the floor and causing damage. So we're going to seal all the panels with a clear silicone. She'll also have a layer of substrate that'll help absorb any water that gets spilled. And as another added layer of protection, we're gonna set the enclosure on some sort of rubber mat. We got this giant enclosure from customcages.com and it was pretty easy to put together. And I think Jinx is gonna absolutely love it. After I completely seal the floor, I'll let it dry for about 24 hours. After it dries, my next task is to add some rock ledges to give her something to climb on and explore. We got this enclosure from customcages.com and just like my reticulated python jinx, it is massive. Not only are these snakes the longest species of snake on earth, but they're also pretty intelligent. It seems that jinx is able to pick up on patterns quicker than my other snakes. So to help keep her mind active, we're adding these rock ledges inside of her new enclosure. She could use these rock ledges to problem solve, crawl along, and explore different parts of her enclosure. It'll also give her some added exercise. Jinx is a little over 14 feet long and weighs 60 pounds. Although they're large snakes, reticulated pythons are surprisingly good climbers. I staggered six of these rock ledges between two to four feet off of the ground. I didn't install them too high because I don't want her to accidentally fall from six feet. Life is busy right now, so we're a little behind on getting this enclosure finished and Jinx moved in. But my father always taught me it's better to take your time and do the job right than rush through it. So step by step, we're getting the job done 
done right, and in the end, it'll all be worth it. I'm giving my giant reticulated python a giant enclosure in my living room. Today we're putting together her new hide box. It's made of wood, so the first thing I did was seal it. Sealing it will make it much easier to keep it clean, and help prevent the wood from soaking in any liquids that may make it smell. I chose this hide for two main reasons. The first reason is that it's slightly raised. The enclosure is very large, so I was concerned with how I was going to keep it warm enough for her. In her current enclosure, I keep her warm side about 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Since the height is raised, I'm going to tape a heat pad right underneath it and hook it to a thermostat. And I'll set the thermostat to 90 degrees. This will ensure that the inside of her hide is always warm enough. The enclosure is also going to have overhead heat sources, which will help keep an ambient temperature of about 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. The second reason I like this hide is because it has a flat roof. So if Jinx wants to take advantage of the overhead heat source, she could lay on the roof and bask. It took us a while to find a good hide, but now that we have that in place, the rest of the enclosure should all come together. I'm building my giant reticulated python a giant enclosure from customcages.com. And today we're going to heat the hide that's inside of her new enclosure. This is such a large enclosure, so I wasn't sure on how to heat it properly. These snakes like the temperatures to be around 90 to 92 degrees Fahrenheit on the warm side of their enclosure. It's going to be difficult to maintain that high of a temperature in such a large enclosure. So I'm going to ensure that at least her hide box maintains that temperature. I'm securing this large heat mat to the bottom of her hide box, which should keep the hide nice and warm. I'm also going to hook the heat mat up to a thermostat, and then the thermostat will automatically turn the heat mat on and off to maintain the appropriate temperature. I had the folks at customcages.com put in a lot of these vents for me which not only provides ventilation, but they also allow me to run wires or temperature probes in and out of the enclosure. It's taking a long time, but we're getting really close to finishing. My parents are visiting for the holidays, so even my dad jumped in to help me get this enclosure ready. I need some substrate and a few little things to take care of, and it'll be ready. Today we laid down some paper, and then we're gonna cover with this coconut chip substrate from Zoomed. I like using this substrate because it does a great job in maintaining humidity. To prepare the substrate, I let the coconut block soak for about 10 minutes in a little bit of water. Water. After the blocks soaked up the water, I broke them down. The blocks were about halfway soaked, so after breaking them down, it gave me a good consistency of damp and dry substrate. Then I spread a thin layer of the substrate out throughout the entire enclosure. I wanted to add a little bit more substrate, so I used this forest floor bedding from Zoomed to fill in the gaps. I think this is a good start, and we could always adjust as needed once she's inside. Next, I put in this giant water dish and log that I got from customcages.com. The only thing we have left to do now is heat up the enclosure, and this is the tricky part. The enclosure is large and in my living room, which makes it difficult to heat up to the 90 degrees Fahrenheit that she likes. So I'm going to at least try to heat up her hide box to 90 degrees Fahrenheit and then have cooler temperatures throughout the enclosure so she could adjust as needed. My giant reticulated python is getting a giant enclosure. In the last video, I set up the heat and it's not working out. So I decided to scrap the belly heat and go with a radiant heat panel. I use these heat panels in quite a few of my enclosures. They're a great source of heat and Jinx won't burn herself if she accidentally touches it. So my plan is to mount it to the inside of her hide box where she spends most of her time. After I have it mounted, I'm going to hook it up to a thermostat and run a temperature probe inside. And then the thermostat will turn on and off the radiant heat panel to ensure that it always remains the perfect temperature inside for her. When I went to close the hide box, I realized that I mounted the heat panel too close to the edge. So I had to remove it and relocate it more toward the center of the hide box. Now that it's relocated, it won't interfere with the lid closing. So I secured the temperature probe with some foil tape and now we're ready to warm it up. I ran the wires outside through a vent and then I hooked it all up to the thermostat. I'm really hoping this heat panel works out because honestly, I'm running out of ideas. So I'm gonna let this warm up and we'll check up on it again soon. My giant reticulated python has finally moved into her giant enclosure from customcages.com. After getting the enclosure heated properly, I added this pathway of river stones for the aesthetics and to give her some additional enrichment. The stones will also function as a place that she could rub against to help remove her skin when she's in shed. After I finished putting the stones in place, I filled up her water dish. And then it was finally time to introduce this big girl to her new home. Last time I weighed Jinx, she weighed 60 pounds or 27.2 kilos. And she's a little over 14 feet long or about 4.3 meters. As soon as she got into the enclosure, she started exploring. And she explored everywhere everything from the floor to the ceiling. Right away, she took advantage of all those rock ledges that we put in. It was amazing to see her climb and balance and do things she just couldn't do with the height of her old enclosure. I'll keep a close eye on her over the next couple weeks to see how she's adjusting to the enclosure, but I think she's going to like it. After all that exploring, she found herself a cozy little spot to curl up for the rest of the day.